good afternoon everyone just let me know in the chat section if you can see uh, the video proper, uh, properly and if you can hear me if the voice is clear just uh, type a thumbs up in the chat section all right uh, rohit bhardwaj if you are here just uh, type a thumbs up if the audio is clear then we'll begin today's session All right, welcome everyone. Welcome to the weekly current affairs session for environment, science and technology. We will be covering the current affairs for the past one week that is from November 23rd to November 30th. First of all, let us see what is the index for today, what are the topics that we will be covering. The first topic is pangolins, the second is sites, uh, the third one is rare Jaipur uh, ground gecko, the fourth one is UN champions of earth award. Fifth one is PSLV C54 and the sixth one is antimicrobial resistance. See uh, all these topics are very important whatever topics that we are covering today, uh, good afternoon Webhav. So all these six topics have been taken, uh, have been taken in this index, have been taken in today's discussion because these are very important not just from your prelims point of view but from mains point of view as well. So just hold on, just follow the discussion whatever facts are being discussed. Just stay with us. Before that, uh, the C is the Mains uh, Daily Answer Writing Challenge is working uh, parallelly on our website rajaisacademy.com. We upload one question every day at 2.30 p.m. on our website. The question for today is explain antimicrobial resistance and its causes. Enlist the initiatives to tackle the issue of antimicrobial resistance at national as well as global levels. Answer in 250 words. So see right now we will be having discussion regarding antimicrobial resistance. It is on our index. After understanding antimicrobial resistance as the sixth topic, you will be very easily able to answer this particular question. Try to answer the question posted on our website as soon as possible and our team will evaluate your answers in the next three days and respond back with their feedback. Even if you feel that you are not confident enough to answer these questions, answer this particular question, I will see you at 9 p.m. today in Seize the Mains Daily Answer Writing Initiative where we will discuss the detailed answer for this question and I will tell you how to answer this question properly to get more marks. So, uh, all right, uh, Sarda and Siddhi. The first topic is, as you can see in the picture, I have this picture of an animal. As you can see, this animal has a lot of scales on its body. Here is the mouth, there are the feet and a lot of scales are there on the, on the body of this animal. This animal is known as pangolin. So, pangolin, it has been understood as the most trafficked animal of the world. Sabse zyada illegal hunting is animal ki hoti hai for various reasons all over the world wherever it is found. So recently the COP19 of sites, conference of parties of uh, conference of parties 19 of this particular convention. This is your convention on international trade in endangered species of wild flora and fauna which is also known as the Washington Convention. In short, CITES is the name for this convention. Now, what is this convention about? First of all, let me tell you, COP28, which was recently, hua tha, that was about United Nations Framework Convention on Climate Change. Her convention se associated, kuch na kuch meeting hoti hai, members ki, whatever member countries are there, they meet from time to time, uh, for every convention and that is known as COP of that convention or conference of parties. So conference of parties 19 that is the 19th meeting of sites was held recently. Ye do teen saal mein ek baar meeting hoti hai in sub uh, member nations ki. And what is sites about? Ye jo convention hai, convention is basically a document. It is an understanding countries sign it, countries ratify it and they say after ratification ki jo bhi is convention mein, is document mein rules mention hai, we will abide by those rules. So what is this convention about? This convention is about that 
इफ देर आर सर्टन प्लांट्स एंड एनिमल्स जिनके इंटरनेशनल ट्रेड की वजह से फॉर कमर्शियल रीजन रीजन इफ इंटरनेशनल ट्रेड इज कैरिड आउट देन देर इज थ्रेट टू सर्वाइवल ऑफ दीज प्लांट्स एंड एनिमल्स देन दोज दैट दोज ट्रेडिंग प्रैक्टिस और ट्रेड इन दोज इंटरनेशनल वाइल्ड लाइफ स्पीशीज ऑफ प्लांट्स एंड एनिमल्स इज रेगुलेटेड बाई दिस कन्वेंशन ये कन्वेंशन बेसिकली रोक थाम लगाती है कि इंटरनेशनल ट्रेड कुछ प्लांट और एनिमल की स्पीशीज में नहीं होना चाहिए ऐसी 36,000 स्पीशीज हैं जो कि साइट्स में लिस्टेड हैं एंड दीज 36,000 स्पीशीज हैव बीन क्लासिफाइड एज वालनरेबल टू एक्सटेंशन कि इनकी जो एक्सटेंशन है वो ज़्यादा बढ़ सकती है इफ ट्रेडिंग हैपन्स फॉर एग्जाम्पल हाउ मेनी एशियाटिक लाइन्स डू वी हैव वी हैव अराउंड सिक्स हंड्रेड टू सेवन हंड्रेड एशियाटिक लाइन्स टाइगर्स का भी जो स्टेटस है दैट इज़ अराउंड सिक्स थाउजेंड टाइगर्स आर देयर इन द कंट्री एज ऑफ नाउ सो इफ एनिमल्स लाइक दीज जिनकी प्रोटेक्शन बहुत ज़्यादा ज़रूरी है कंट्री के लिए एंड पूरे वर्ल्ड के लिए आप मान लीजिए कि कमर्शियल रीजन्स की वजह से फॉर एग्जाम्पल फॉर देयर मीट फॉर देयर फर फॉर देयर कोट फॉर देयर टीथ इफ ट्रेडिंग इज टेकिंग प्लेस इफ पीपल किल देम एंड ट्रेडिंग इन सच वाइल्ड एनिमल्स और देयर ट्रोफीज टेक्स प्लेस दैन वॉट विल हैपन टू दीज एनिमल्स दे विल बी दे विल दे विल गो एक्सटिंक्ट फ्राम अर्थ सो ऐसी स्पीशीज को रेगुलेट करता है साइट्स ना वॉट यू हैव टू सी हेयर इज दैट देर आर थ्री अपेंडिस और थ्री चैप्टर्स है साइट्स के अंदर जो फर्स्ट अपेंडिक्स है अपेंडिक्स वन दैट कवर्स थ्री परसेंट ऑफ द थर्टी सिक्स थाउजेंड स्पीशीज इस अपेंडिक्स में जो भी स्पीशीज आती हैं उनका इंटरनेशनल ट्रेड अलाउड नहीं होता इंटरनेशनल कमर्शियल ट्रेड इज जनरली प्रोहिबिटेड सो कमर्शियल ट्रेड हो ही नहीं सकता है सो इफ समबडी इज कॉट ट्रेडिंग इन दीज स्पीशीज ऑफ एनिमल्स और प्लांट्स देन उनको उन पर क्रिमिनल लाइबिलिटी होती है दे आर सब्जेक्ट टू जोरिस्टिक्शन ऑफ दैट पर्टिकुलर नेशन दे आर लाइबल अपेंडिक्स टू में जो भी आपकी स्पीशीज आती है अपेंडिक्स टू में जो भी प्लांट्स या एनिमल्स के नाम हैं जो भी इनलिस्टेड हैं दीज स्पीशीज इन दैम यू नो इंटरनेशनल ट्रेड is regulated international trade can take place under certain circumstances but it is very much regulated the third one is uh, appendix 3 so this covers 1% of the species your maximum species are here in 97% so uh, in the appendix 3 only those species are covered jinke trade se ek particular country ko bahut zyada nuksan ho raha hai and they need cooperation and collaboration or help of other countries to prevent this international trade from happening for example aisi koi country ho sakti hai jahan se ek प्लांट की स्पीशीज है वो सिर्फ इंडिया में ही एक्सपोर्ट होती है सो इफ इंडिया कोलाबोरेट्स विद दैट कंट्री इफ इंडिया हेल्प्स दैट कंट्री आउट देन दैट ट्रेड और दैट एक्सपोर्ट इंपोर्ट दैट बिजनेस कैन बी स्टॉप्ड सो दो स्पीशीज दे आर लिस्टेड इन अपेंडिक्स थ्री वेयर पार्टीज नीड सम कोलाबोरेशन ऑफ अदर मेंबर्स सो स्पीशीज सब्जेक्ट टू रेगुलेशन विद इन द जोरिस्टिक्शन ऑफ अ पार्टी एंड फॉर विच द कॉपरेशन ऑफ अदर पार्टीज इज नीडेड सो मोस्टली जो सबसे ज़्यादा थ्रेटन फॉर एग्जाम्पल योर क्रिटिकली एंडेंजर्ड स्पीशीज जो होती है आपकी आई यू सी एन रेड लिस्ट के अकॉर्डिंग यू विल फाइंड दम इन अपेंडिक्स वन नाउ वॉट इज द न्यूज योर सी ओ पी नाइनटीन और कॉन्फ्रेंस ऑफ पार्टीज नाइनटीन जो साइट्स का हुआ है अंडर दैट दे हैव रिकमेंडेड दैट जो भी ड्रग मेकिंग में वट एवर मेडिसिन स्पेसिफाई यूज ऑफ पार्ट ऑफ पैंगोलिन पार्ट्स ऑफ पैंगोलिन शुड बी डिलीटेड फ्रॉम दोज मेडिसिन तो आपका जो ये ऑफिशियल फार्मा कोपिया होता है जिसमें मेडिसिन या ड्रग्स बनाने की चीज़ें या यू नो इन्ग्रीडियंट्स मैंशन होते हैं दे हैव आस्ड दैट द रेफरेंस टू पैंगोलिन दैट शुड बी रिमूव एंटायरली फ्रॉम दिस बुक एंड वाई शुड इट बी रिमूव बिकॉज क्योंकि पैंगोलिन ऐसी यू नो काफ़ी ज़्यादा मेडिसिनल प्रैक्टिस में यूज होता है दैट्स वाई इसकी हंटिंग बहुत ज़्यादा होती है सो लेट्स सी वॉट आर पैंगोलिन्स योर वॉट वॉट आर पैंगोलिन्स वॉट काइंड ऑफ एनिमल्स दे आर आई थिंक फ्राम द पिक्चर यू कैन सी दैट दे आर स्केली एनिमल्स स्केली एनिमल्स दिखते में बड़ा लग रहा है बट अदरवाइज इट इज़ अ स्मॉल एनिमल इट ओनली ईट्स एंड्स सिर्फ एंड्स खाता है इट इज़ अ स्केली एंड ईटर एंड इट इज़ द मोस्ट ट्रैफिक्ड एनिमल इन द वर्ल्ड दीज एनिमल्स आर नॉट ओवी पेरस दे आर मैमल्स दे ईट एंड दे आर ईट टर्माइट्स एंड लार्वे एंड आर ऑफन नोन एज स्केली एंड ईटर एज अ जस्ट सेड 
देर आर एट स्पीशीज ऑफ पैंगुलेंस पैंगुलेंस के भी आगे बहुत टाइप्स होते हैं सो एट स्पीशीज ऑफ पैंगुलेंस आर फाउंड ऑल ओवर द वर्ल्ड इसमें से एट में से जो दो स्पीशीज है इंडियन पैंगुलिन एंड चाइनीज पैंगुलिन डोंट गो आफ्टर द नेम इंडियन पैंगुलिन स्पीशीज एंड चाइनीज पैंगुलिन स्पीशीज बोथ ऑफ देम आर फाउंड इन इंडिया इंडिया में दो स्पीशीज मिलती हैं आठ में से एंड उनका यू uh, नो you know, जो आठ स्पीशीज हैं दे आर फाउंड ओनली ऑन टू कॉन्टिनेंट्स एंड द कॉन्टिनेंट्स आर एशिया एंड अफ्रीका दे रेंज फ्रॉम वालनरेबल टू क्रिटिकली एंडेंजर्ड वील सी इन अ वाइल्ड बट दिस इज समथिंग दैट यू हैव टू रिमेंबर दैट इन इंडिया योर चाइनीज पैंगुलिन एंड इंडियन पैंगुलिन आर फाउंड सो डोंट गेट कन्फ्यूज बाय द वर्ड चाइनीज पैंगुलिन दैट इट मस्ट बी इन चाइना ओनली नो दैट इज नॉट द केस वॉट इज द प्रोटेक्शन स्टेटस प्रोटेक्शन स्टेटस दैट दे आर लिस्टेड इन स्केड्यूल वन पार्ट वन ऑफ वाइल्ड लाइफ प्रोटेक्शन एक्ट ऑफ नाइनटीन सेवेंटी टू जो आपका नेशनल लॉ है उसके अंडर हाइएस्ट प्रोटेक्शन है वी हैव वाइल्ड लाइफ प्रोटेक्शन एक्ट टू प्रोटेक्ट ऑल काइंड ऑफ बायोडाइवर्सिटी इन द कंट्री एंड द हाइएस्ट प्रोटेक्शन एज ऑफ नाउ नॉट द अमेंडमेंट बट एज ऑफ नाउ इट इज प्रोवाइडेड अंडर स्केड्यूल वन ऑफ वाइल्ड लाइफ प्रोटेक्शन एक्ट ऑफ नाइनटीन सेवेंटी टू इन साइट्स साइट्स के हमने अभी तीन अपेंडिस के बारे में पढ़ा इन लाइक आउट ऑफ ऑल द थ्री अपेंडिस ऑफ साइट्स Appendix one has the highest protection, and that is given to three percent out of thirty-six thousand species. So, pangolin is covered in appendix one of sites, and the IUCN status, International Union for Conservation of Nature and Natural Resources, a red data book aati hai inki, and under this red data book, species or biodiversity they are classified according to the वालनरेबिलिटी स्टेटस क्या वो स्पीशीज क्रिटिकली एंडेंजर्ड है दैट इज इट माइट गो एक्सटिंक्ट इन द कमिंग ईयर्स इज इट एंडेंजर्ड इज इट वालनरेबल और इट इज और इज इट लीस्ट कंसर्न सो इंडियन पैंगुलिन दैट इज द फर्स्ट स्पीशीज फाउंड इन इंडिया दैट इज एंडेंजर्ड बट चाइनीज पैंगुलिन दैट इज द सेकेंड स्पीशीज फाउंड इन इंडिया दैट इज क्रिटिकली एंडेंजर्ड ना वॉट इज द जोग्राफिकल स्पैन अगेन एज आई टोल्ड यू एट स्पीशीज फाउंड इन एशिया एंड अफ्रीका नाउ Threats. What can be the first threat about this uh, pangolin? In ki uh, you know habitat kharaab ho sakta hai. There could be hunting. There could be hunting for meat. There could be hunting for their scales for making uh, other products for making commercial products. And there is hunting because a lot of medicines, especially in the Chinese culture, they are uh, made by hunting these animals. So this is a map that we have here from um, IUCN SSC pangolin specialist group. Let's start from India first. India in this dark blue, you have reference to Indian pangolin, as you can see. So your Indian pangolin is found almost all over the uh, all over the country. I'm zooming it, uh, zooming it out for you, zooming it in for you. So this uh, thing in uh, this shaded part in blue, which uh, this reference, this is your Indian pangolin. The other part in dark blue or your violet color that is chinese pangolin so as you can see this part refers to chinese pangolin then you have philippine pangolin which is obviously found near uh, uh, in philippines so again it is part of southeast asia then also you have sunda pangolin for india you have to remember that apart from these two species chinese and indian no other species is found in india Uh, sunda is found in indonesia all parts of indonesia malaysia thailand you can see sunda pangolin there and then you have species of pangolin in africa you have white bellied pangolin you have giant pangolin you have back bellied uh, pangolin and you have ground pangolin pangolins in africa they are not critically endangered or endangered pangolins in india they are endangered and critically endangered as we studied so this is very important animal for india uh, most importantly again uh, you know you don't have to take the notes of this session the entire discussions uh, ppt that is running behind me this will be uploaded as a pdf on our telegram channel which is raj malhotra's ias so after this discussion you can go to our telegram channel and download the entire pdf with the picture so you don't have to worry about noting things or making any maps also let me know in the comment section if there is um uh, if there is any doubt with regards to this topic webber while take this doubt at the end that is about your preparation okay uh, sham i've got these requests regarding whatever i write on the board earlier also 
see sometimes uh, there are certain concepts which are not included in the PPT I understand and I find them necessary to uh, explain a certain topic. But in the coming lectures they will be inculcated for example, uh, today the PPT is wide enough, it is detailed and explain, uh, detailed enough to cover the static part of the syllabus also. So, earlier we were not covering the static concepts, uh, they are covered in our classroom sessions in the GS course that we are running. But uh, from now onwards, we are including that also in our PPT, so do not worry about it. Uh, Webhub COP 27 and 28, uh, just refer to previous Wednesday's lecture, we have covered COP 27, COP, uh, we have uh, uh, read uh, a little bit about COP 28 also. So, just refer to previous Wednesday's current affairs uh, weekly lecture for environment science and technology. All right, all right. So, let us move on to the next topic uh, that uh, there is the species of gecko. Gecko looks like a lizard, lizard ki tarah ye dikhta hai. So, there is Jaipur, uh, Jaipur ground gecko. This has been listed in appendix 2 of sites to control its trafficking. So, with regards to sites at this COP 19, this species was enlisted in appendix 2. So, this is again an important news that is coming. So, this gecko, this is found in the eastern ghats of India. You have the western ghats on the western coast and you have eastern ghats on the eastern coast. So, it is found in the eastern ghats of India here and it is endemic to India. Sirf India mein milta hai, India ke eastern ghats mein milta hai aur kahi nahi milta. So, what are the states that are located on the eastern ghats? Your Odisha would be there, parts of West Bengal would be there. Your parts of Tamil Nadu are there and parts of Andhra Pradesh are there. So, if I am saying, if I am talking about Eastern Ghats, then you can be very sure that uh, this would be found in 4-5 states in India. So, recently the uh, Jaipur uh, ground gecko has been included in appendix 2 of the Convention on International Trade in Endangered Species of Flora and Fauna, which means that trade in this particular species, agar is gecko ka international trade carry out karna hai, now this is endemic to India, so if it has to go out of India for commercial purposes, agar koi is ki hunting karke, in ki skin ko kisi or product mein convert karke, sell off karna chaate hai, that is your commercial purposes, so the, a lot of restrictions would be placed now as the IUCN status for this particular species is endangered. Now, since it has come in appendix 2, so international trade would be regulated. It is not prohibited, but it is regulated. Under Wildlife Protection Act 1972, it is not listed as of now because it was recently found that this uh, species is threatened uh, to, it is moving towards extinction. So, let us read about it a bit that it is a reptile endemic to India found in the Eastern Ghats. It is known to be present in four locations including Southern Odisha, Northern, Northern Andhra Pradesh that is your uh, states having Eastern Ghats. Then th what are the threats to this uh, threats uh, to this endangered animal, uh, endangered gecko, gecko species? Habitat loss and degradation that is because we are uh, moving towards becoming the highest population. So, yes we need more space as human beings and habitat loss is occurring in many parts of the country. So, this is always the first threat that is happening to any of the animal or plant species uh, we can say. Poaching for domestic and international trade that is where your sites come in, comes in. Forest fires that is again a, a very big problem for India. Tourism, quarrying and mining activity. Quarrying and mining activity it is carried out in eastern ghats. Jo aapki eastern coast hai, jo eastern ghats hai, they are rich in minerals at some points or at some divisions. So, mining activity udar bhoat zyada hoti that is why there is threat to its population. The regulation is needed to prevent illegal export and control the activities in India. So, this step is coming at the right time that is what they want to say. Moving on to the next topic, this is one of the most important topics for today, United Nations Environment Program that is the agency that works for protection of environment all over the globe. Unka ek award hota hai that, uh, that is UN's champion, uh, Champions of the Earth Award. This is the biggest environmental honor that is given to anyone all over the globe. So, if somebody is working or if some organization is working to protect the environment, then this is the highest honor they can get. And this honor has been received by one uh, Dr. Purnima Devi. Dr. Purnima Devi, uh, she worked to 
uh, you know conserve the population of adjutant stock or uh, I'll show you the picture here. Yes, greater adjutant stock which is found in parts of Assam, inki population bahut zyada dwindle kar rahi thi to protect, to, uh, to conserve this particular species. She ran a mission, ek inka, uh, you know, ek, uh, Hargila Army naam se ek group hai, group of women hai which she has been leading for decades. Hargila is the indigenous name for wild adjutant stock. So uh, your greater adjutant stock, this is known as Hargila in the local language. So Hargila Army was uh, created by her to protect the population, to protect the wild adjutant or uh, greater adjutant stock. So she has received this UN's champion of the champions of the earth award. So the he headlines were that biolog biologist devotes career to saving bone swallowing stock. Isi stock ko kai bhari bone swallowing stock bhi bol diya jata hai. Let's read about the award first then we'll talk uh, then we'll talk about what is the initiative that she has uh, been running. Also, you can use this uh, whatever we are studying in your ethics examples, whenever you study environmental ethics or you see case studies of how to protect environment around you, how to conserve biodiversity around you. So, definitely use this example, use her reference as a leader who has worked hard to protect the biodiversity of a particular area. So, UNEP's Champions of the Earth uh, honors individuals, groups and organizations whose actions have a transformative impact on the environment. So that is very important. Ki jo impact have ka transformative hona chahiye. It's not that you're doing something just for the sake of it. There should be statistically available data that should show improvement. The annual, uh, this is an annual award. Uh, one of our Prime Minister, uh, Mr. Narendra Modi also got this award earlier because he was leading a lot of efforts. Uh, he was leading India, he is still leading India to moving towards renewable energy. So he was also awarded this uh, award. He was also given this award a few years back. So this is an annual award. It is the UN's highest environmental honor, United Nations Agency ka sabse bada environmental honor hai accorded for transformative action to prevent, halt and reverse ecosystem degradation. It recognizes outstanding leaders from government such as our Prime Minister, civil society that could be your NGO, some NGO or a leader of some NGO uh, just, like in this uh, just like in this case and the private sector. It was, uh, you know, it was started in 2005, an annual award here. It has been awarded to trail blazers at the forefront of the efforts to protect our natural world. So, three categories hain jahan par award diya jata hai. First of all, if you are doing an action that also inspires. So, inspiration and action. The second one is entrepreneurial vision. Agar aap koi aisa startup launch karte hain, jo ki ecosystem degradation ko rok sakta hai. If you plan a company or you launch a startup or a product which prevents ecosystem degradation, then that counts uh, under entrepreneurial, entrepreneurial vision. The third one is science and innovation. So let's see who are the people who have got this award earlier. So uh, Dr. Purnima Devi Barman is among the honorees of this year's Champions of the Earth Award. There are other people also who have got this award in different categories. From India in 2018, our Prime Minister Mr. Narendra Modi was awarded this, uh, was given this award. Then in 2009, back in 2009, um, Mr. Tulsi Tanti was, he was the chairman of Suzlon Group. Again, uh, he worked for energy conservation. Inke jo startup ne, inke jo company ne, Suzlon Group me for his entrepreneurial vision in combating climate change uh, by, uh, you know, efficiency of use of energy. So he was given this award and in 2016, Afroz Alam, a lawyer who led the cleanup at Mumbai's Varsova Beach, Beach, very popular. He also received this award. So this is the fourth time that somebody has received this award. Now let's talk about Hargila Army and definitely note it in your notes for your GS4 example or be ready for a case study that you can answer through this example. Alright, so Dr. Barman leads the Hargila Army. Let me just show you the picture of Hargila Army. Yes, if you can see properly, there are women and if you look at the sadis of this, these women, they have the picture of greater adjutant stock on their sadis. So what they do is, they paint or they you know carry out some kind of embroidery on fabrics 
this kind of embroidery or this kind of painting is carried out and they draw greater adjutant stocks on these fabrics and by selling off these fabrics as sarees or as you know textiles these women earn money and they use that money to again protect the uh, population of greater adjutant stocks so they are not dependent on anyone or of for fun, funds or donations they are not asking for donations from anyone they are self dependent inka um, they are running their own enterprise where they are selling textiles or their own embroidered or painted sarees and side by side they are also protecting the population of uh, this uh, this species not just by sending uh, sharing the painted material or by selling the painted material but also they carry out a lot of efforts to protect their nests so uh, Hargila army consists of over 10,000 women. So, a uh, few of them are uh, visible in the picture, but these are 10,000 women who are working for the protection of the species. They protect nesting sites, they rehabilitate the injured stalks which have fallen from their nest and arrange baby showers to celebrate the arrival of newborn chicks. Uh, and this adjutant stock it has cultural reference also in all the uh, in all the folk songs and poems and festivals and plays of Assam this uh, adjutant stock is featured. So a tall bamboo nesting platform for the endangered bird was uh, started to uh, started started building in 2017 that was by the efforts of this particular lady. Her efforts were rewarded a couple of years later when the first greater adjutant stock uh, chicks were hashed on these experimental platforms. So whatever the money is coming out of that, they are not just using it to run their homes but uh, to protect their, protect the species better. The IUCN status for the species is endangered and the span, span means where it is found, this is the span, it is found in parts of Assam, parts of West Bengal. So this is where it is found, year around. Otherwise, uh, it can you know obviously fly or move towards other parts of Nepal also, but this part in um, dark yellow, this is where the species is normally found year around. So it is found in just small parts of our country, so uh, protection of this particular species has been lauded and she's got the greatest environmental honor. Now we'll move to the science part of this discussion. If there are any doubts till now, just let me know in the chat section. All right. Uh, good afternoon, Pooja. Uh, Sham, uh, we understand, but there are certain components that we expect you to cover in your GS itself. For example, the concepts of PSLV, GSLV, how a rocket functions. So that is covered in the GS static part. Uh, yes, we do explain it here because some students are not aware of that. But uh, uh, I understand that it becomes necessary later also. All right. Any doubts with regards to the topics till now? Um, big line shots. Mageshwari, what we can do is we are already running out of time. We have at least three topics to go. What we can do is we can take this topic next week. All right. If there are uh, no doubts coming with regards to the environment part of this uh, discussion, Weber will take this doubt at the end of the lecture. That is about your preparation. Uh, we are just concerned about the topics that we have discussed till now. So yes, the next topic is PSLV C-54 successfully places Earth observation satellite and 8 nano satellites in orbit. See India has a lot of rockets now, we started with SLV then we moved on to advanced satellite launch vehicle. Now PSLV, yeah, polar satellite launch vehicle which was earlier used only for launching satellites in your low earth orbit or sun synchronous polar orbit that is also part of low earth orbit only it just moves from pole to pole the satellite that is there in sspos or sun synchronous polar orbits that moves from pole to pole so that is the difference so earlier pslv was used for these purposes only it was not used for geostationary or geosynchronous satellites so uh, we named it polar satellite launch vehicle but the name is a misnomer it is not just for polar satellites it can be used for geo uh, geo heighted satellites also so PSLV C54 successfully places earth observation satellite that is your EOS and eight nano satellites in orbit so that is a huge feat your earth observation satellites jo bhi ab maan lijiye agar aapki earth idhar hai 
तो अर्थ को अगर ऑब्जर्व करने के लिए उसकी ऊपर से पिक्चर्स लेनी है योर अर्थ ऑब्जर्वेशन सैटेलाइट्स दे वर्क लाइक कैमरास सो इफ पिक्चर्स हैव टू बी टेकन फॉर एनी फ्रॉम एनी सैटेलाइट देन योर सैटेलाइट हैज टू बी क्लोज टू द अर्थ सर्फेस तो आप 36,000 की हाइट पर दैट इज द हाइट ऑफ योर जियो ऑर्बिट्स आप वहाँ पर अपनी अर्थ ऑब्जर्वेशन सैटेलाइट्स नहीं भेज सकते दे हैव टू बी क्लोजर टू द अर्थ सो अर्लियर वी हैड अ लॉट ऑफ अर्थ ऑब्जर्वेशन सैटेलाइट्स योर ओशियन सैट वॉज देयर रिसोर्स सैट वॉज देयर कार्टो सैट वॉज देयर दैट वॉज यू नो टेकिंग पिक्चर्स ऑफ द अर्थ फॉर वेरियस पर्पजेज फॉर रिसोर्स मैपिंग फॉर ओशियन मैपिंग फॉर चेकिंग हाउ मच फॉरेस्ट कवर इज देयर इन वट पार्ट्स ऑफ द कंट्री From now onwards, ISRO has started this denomination that EOS, that is Earth Observation Satellite, would be the name for all the satellites which are used as cameras to observe the Earth's surface. So next, EOS has been launched using PSLV C54. This C54 is the number of launch. So we started with PSLV one, two, three. Now we have moved on to 54. So PSLV C54 is the code of launch, and it has launched EOS or Earth Observation Satellite 06 in orbit. So this is the 56th flight of Polar Satellite Launch Vehicle and the 24th uh, uh, flight of the PSLV XL version. See what is this X XL version? I have a picture here. Yes. See PSLV ke bhi kafi sare versions hote hai for example if you want to launch a satellite of 1000 kg only then you can uh, use the normal pslv but agar aapko bhari satellite bhejna hai and aapke paas ek stronger rocket available nahi hai if you do not have a stronger rocket available to launch a heavy satellite or in other words if you do not want to use a stronger rocket you want to save on fuel then what you do is आप इसी रॉकेट के आसपास जो इसकी बेस कॉन्फ़िगरेशन है आप इसी के आसपास ही कुछ रॉकेट बूस्टर्स लगा देते हैं यू एड सम रॉकेट बूस्टर्स हियर सो दैट मोर थ्रस्ट और मोर पावर कैन बी गिवन टू दिस रॉकेट सो एज ऑफ नाउ वी हैव द पी एस एल वी कोर अलोन वर्जन इज देयर कोर अलोन व्हीकल वेर देर आर नो स्ट्रैप ऑन्स कोई भी एडेड रॉकेट मोटर्स नहीं है एंड यू हैव दिस पी एस एल वी एक्सएल वर्जन विच इज विच हैज एक्सटेंडेड स्ट्रैप ऑन मोटर्स सो इसका जो पेलोड कैपेसिटी होता है द द अमाउंट ऑफ वेट इट कैन कैरी इन टू द ऑर्बिट और इन स्पेस दैट इज हायर दैन योर पी एस एल वी कोर अलोन वर्जन जो आपका पी एस एल वी एक्सएल का जो है दिस इज द ट्वेंटी फोर्थ फ्लाइट ऑफ पी एस एल वी एक्सएल द एट नैनो सैटेलाइट इंक्लूड इसरो नैनो सैटेलाइट टू फॉर भूटान आई एन एस टू बी आनंद एस्ट्रोकास्ट फोर सैटेलाइट टू थाइबोल सैटेलाइट एंड ईओ एस सिक्स इट इज द ओशियन सैट सीरीज थर्ड जनरेशन सैटेलाइट अब इसका नाम ओशियन सैट नहीं है अर्थ को ऑब्जर्व करने के लिए है सो ई ओ एस सीरीज ही फॉर बेटर क्लैरिटी इसरो हैज स्टार्टेड नेमिंग दीज सैटेलाइट एज ई ओ एस ओनली सो इट इज इन एनविसाज टू ऑब्जर्व ओशियन कलर डेटा सी सर्फेस टेम्परेचर एंड विंड वेक्टर डेटा टू यूज इन ओशियनोग्राफी क्लाइमेट चेंज एंड मिटीरोलॉजिकल एप्लीकेशन वॉट आर दी अपकमिंग मिशन ऑफ इसरो इफ यू गो टू द वेबसाइट द लिस्ट एटलीस्ट फाइव मिशन योर गगन यान इज इन प्लान योर नाविक नाविक वॉज लेटर देर नाउ जो आपका नाविक सिस्टम है ये ग्लोबल करना चाह रहे हैं सो दैट इज ऑल्सो प्लान दी अदर वन इज योर आदित्य एल वन टू ऑब्जर्व द करोना लेयर ऑफ द सन लैगरेंजन पॉइंट वन पे आपका आदित्य एल वन एल वन स्टैंड फॉर लैगरेंजन पॉइंट वन वी डिस्कस दिस मल्टीपल टाइम्स इन आर वेंसडे करंट अफेयर्स सीरीज इट सेल्फ सो यू कैन गो बैक टू द प्रीवियस लेक्चर्स अंडर द लाइव टैब ऑन आर यूट्यूब चैनल वहाँ पर आपको प्रीवियस लेक्चर्स मिल जाएंगे वी हैव अ सेपरेट प्ले लिस्ट ऑल्सो सो कवर ऑल दीज एक्सपेरिमेंट्स वी हैव दिस पेड एक्स ऑल्सो for having an indian space station we have exposat that would be our observatory in space so this is the information about polar satellite launch vehicle this is the third generation launch vehicle of india earlier we had slv3 and aslv operating it is the first indian launch vehicle to be equipped with liquid stages liquid stage mein aapke paas control zyada hota hai ek rocket ko lekar so your pslv has four stages the first one is solid then the second one is liquid then the third one is solid and the fourth one is again liquid jab ke pichle rockets the wo do solid stages use kar rahe the your aslv had two solid stages and slv had just one solid stage so your pslv has a liquid stage also to ab wo liquid fuel use karke jaise ki aap petrol ya diesels apni car mein use karte you can turn off the engine and then you have more control but if you are using a solid fuel all of it get gets burnt at 
वंस तो आपके पास कंट्रोल इतना नहीं होता सो दैट वॉज अज फीड फॉर इंडिया दैट फर्स्ट टाइम लिक्विड फ्यूल और लिक्विड इंजन कॉल द विकास इंजन कुड बी यूज वेन पी एस एल बी वॉज क्रिएटेड सो वॉट इज द डिफरेंस इट वॉज डेवलप टू लॉन्च लो अर्थ ऑर्बिट सैटेलाइट इन टू पोलर एंड सन सेंट्रॉनस ऑर्बिट्स वेयर एज जी एस एल वी दैट इज योर जियो सेंट्रॉनस लॉन्च व्हीकल वॉज डेवलप टू लॉन्च हैवियर इन सैट क्लास ऑफ जियो सेंट्रॉनस सैटेलाइट्स इन टू ऑर्बिट बट अगैन पी एस एल वी को भी हम जियो सैटेलाइट्स लॉन्च करने के लिए यूज करते हैं then uh, the next topic for today is your world anti microbial awareness week this is a very important topic isi se related humne seize the mains ka bhi aaj ka question pucha hai so if you have any doubts with regards to pslv and the pslv c54 mission just let me know in the chat section All right, all right. All right. So you know, World Micro Anti Microbial Awareness Week 2022 ends with Muscat Ministerial Manifesto on Anti Microbial Resistance. So, this topic to understand, ke liye, you must be very clear about anti microbial resistance. What is it? See, whatever infections are being caused in our body, our body me, whatever infections are being caused, they are caused because of germs. कुछ ना कुछ जर्म्स की वजह से इन्फेक्शन होते हैं सो डॉक्टर्स वट दिस ए कि अगर आपको एक बार ही इन्फेक्शन होता है समबडी इज गेटिंग इन्फेक्टेड वंस और फॉर द फर्स्ट टाइम देन दे टेक सम एंटीबायोटिक्स या कोई एंटी माइक्रोबियल चीज वो लेते हैं दे पुट इट इन साइड देयर बॉडी इन द फॉर्म ऑफ एन इंजेक्शन और यू नो अ टैबलेट एंड वॉट हैपन इन साइड देयर बॉडी इज दैट ऑल दीज माइक्रोब्स दे गेट किल्ड बट देर आर फ्यू माइक्रोब्स विच आर लेफ्ट फॉर एग्जाम्पल यहाँ पर जो एक बैक्टीरिया है वो बच गया है दिस बैक्टीरिया वॉज प्रॉबली resistant to the medicine that you were giving ki aapne light medicine di thi and this was resistant to that medicine so this has not died but abhi iski jo iska jo number hai that is not enough to give you another illness aapko fever nahi aayega abhi aapko koi problem nahi aayegi because the number is very low then after some time due to you know evolution and due to reproduction after a few years or after many years what happens that inside living beings or in the environment also for example if bacteria is lying somewhere on the trees or inside rivers or in our food systems to ye jo resistant ya microbial resistant bacteria hota hai it multiplies and if this microbial if this bacteria multiplies means whatever medicine that you were giving earlier jo aap pehle dawai de rahe the ya jo aap dawai kha rahe the wo ab is bacteria ko maar nahi sakegi it will not be able to fight this bacteria and hence the illness will not be cured so there will be no no cure in this case so you will have to use a stronger medicine so what you do would you use a stronger medicine again in may be kuch na kuch uh, honge jo ki is medicine se bhi resistant honge and that continues so what we are moving towards is kyunki hum log antibiotics or uh, uh, we are using so many antibiotics and we are not taking care of the hygiene and things so ye jo anti microbial resistance hai there will come a time when we will not have medicines or any advancement in medicine to treat the diseases that we are going through that will be because kyunki bacteria ka evolution ya jo germs ka evolution itna zyada ho jayega that we will not be able to keep up with the evolution of this bacteria we will not have medicines available if you know you know around 10 years back very less number of antibiotics were prescribed only mild antibiotics were prescribed now for every illness whether you have a stomach ache to thick anything that happens you go around the corner and you buy an antibiotic again to fight this the government understood so india launched a red line campaign so whatever uh, antibiotics you buy from the pharmacy aap ek doctor ki prescription ke bina antibiotic nahi khareed sakte and on the ऑन द कवरिंग ऑफ योर एंटीबायोटिक मेडिसिन जो उनका पैकेट होता है उसके ऊपर एक रेड लाइन बनी होती है टू जस्ट इन्फॉर्म यू दैट दिस इज नॉट अ नॉर्मल थिंग दैट यू आर गोइंग टू ईट दैट इज एन एंटीबायोटिक एंड इट कैन गिव यू रेफरकशन इन फ्यूचर आफ्टर अ फ्यू ईयर सो बी केयरफुल अबाउट हाउ यू कंज्यूम दिस मेडिसिन सो इंडिया का जो रेड लाइन कैंपेन था दैट वॉज लॉडेड टू फाइट द एंटी माइक्रोबियल रेजिस्टेंस ना वॉट आर द वॉट इज द एमरजेंस एंड स्प्रेड ऑफ ए एम आर it occurs naturally over time usually through genetic changes or evolution 
Antimicrobial resistance organisms are found in people, they can be found in animals also. For example, if animals ko treat karne ke liye bhi antibiotics use ki gai hai, to unme bhi antimicrobial resistance develop ho sakta hai. And if they develop some illness which cannot be treated by any medicine, they develop antimicrobial resistance, their body develops that and disease cannot be treated that disease can be transmitted into human beings as well. So, uh, use of um, anti, um, antibiotics in animals or antimicrobial resistance development in animals that is also problem. In food, plants and the environment in water, soil and air. So, if it is antimicrobial resistance aapke paani mein, aapke hawa mein, aapke soil mein present hai then you will be consuming any of these three and hence uh, out of soil your crops would be generated and hence all of the population the entire population of the world will get antimicrobial resistance at some point of time so it is very important to take precautionary measures right now so they can spread from person to person or between people and animals including from food of animal origin whether it's your dairy whether it's your meat whatever uh, food you uh, take from animal sources so, what are the drivers or what are the causes of antimicrobial resistance? The misuse and overuse of antimicrobials or antibiotics. The next one is lack of access to clean water, sanitation and hygiene for both humans and animals. Hygiene is very important. The third one is poor infection and disease prevention and control in healthcare facilities and farms. Poor access to quality affordable max, uh, medicines, vaccines and diagnostics. What happens is low quality medicines जब use करते हैं तो आपके bacteria को उन medicines से fight करने की आदत पड़ जाती है and the bacteria evolves over time, it develops into stronger bacteria over time. Then you have lack of awareness and knowledge and lack of enforcement of legislation happening at national and international level. This time they have focused on one health approach, when one health approach is very important to fight antimicrobial resistance. What is your one health approach? First of all, human health should be focused upon. Secondly, animal health and third, environmental health. All these three depend on each other. If there animals mein diseases, hai, to wo humans mein transmit honge. If your environment is not healthy, then you will not have healthy human beings. So, one health approach has been focused upon. and. Uh, they had uh, this ministerial conference, they had global targets to fight antimicrobial resistance. These are the three targets that reduce the total amount of antimicrobials or antibiotics used in agri food systems by at least 30 to 50 percent by 2030. Use of antibiotics in agriculture and food systems so that we do not intake those antibiotics preserve critically important antimicrobials for human medicine and ending the use of medically important antimicrobials for growth promotion in animals. Kafi sare jo medicines hoti hai, they are used for promoting growth in animals or for increasing milk production in animals. So, that should be stopped because that can be done easily. Ensuring that access group antibiotics represent at least 60 percent of overall antibiotics, uh, antibiotic consumption in humans by 2030. So, this was broadly about the manifesto that has come up uh, regarding this Muscat ministerial manifesto on antimicrobial resistance. This topic is important, antimicrobial resistance is important especially with regards to India, our seasonal, seasonal variation is in our country mein, and that is why we have a lot of diseases here. Especially we were talking about multi-drug resistance, tuberculosis um, a few years back, we could see that tuberculosis is a level par ja chuka hai kafi indian population mein jahan par kisi bhi medicine se kisi bhi pre present medicine se usko treat nahi kiya ja sakta tha so that was again fought out on a very large scale by the go by the government uh, of the day so again prepare this these all six topics for your prelims as well as mains download the pdf from our telegram channel uh, regarding the weekly current affairs for today it would be available in the next one hour I will see you today at 9 pm and seize the mains daily answer writing initiative. Till then stay tuned to the channel. Webhav about Navik we have discussed uh, in the previous lectures. So, you can refer to the previous current affairs lectures and with regard to you know with regards to online lectures we are running this weekly current affairs subject wise 2.30 pm at every day uh, at uh, like from Monday to Saturday at 2.30 pm. And you can also check out the other initiatives that we are running on our YouTube channel. So, with regards to the topics, if there are any doubts, just let me know, then we will call this a day. 
All right. Thank you. Thank you, all of you. Thank you, Rohit. Um, take care. Keep working hard and all the best to all of you.